action potentials are the signals that your neurons, your brain and nerve cells, send to other parts of the body to tell other cells what to do. But what are they exactly? When we say a signal, are we talking about an electrical signal, something visual? What actually is moving or changing when that signal gets sent? That's what this video is all about. We're gonna go through the four stages of the action potential, resting membrane potential, depolarization, repolarization, and refractory period, and also kind of see the big picture of how this all works. It's kind of a long process, even though it happens really quick. So let's jump to the whiteboard and get started. Well, I'm in a much smaller, more cramped box than I'm used to. So here we have a neuron, and we're gonna zoom in to a piece of the axon on that neuron. You see the cell membranes being drawn here, and here we have the inside, and here we have the outside of that axon of the neuron. Now this whole process, of depolarization, repolarization, refractory period happens as a sort of chain reaction down the length of the neuron. Even though we're just looking at one spot on the neuron, each time the depolarization happens, it triggers the next part of the neuron to depolarize as well. So even though as we get bogged down in the weeds of how this action potential occurs, remember this is happening all along the axon in a sequence that leads to the signal being transferred to the end or the axon terminals of the neuron so it can get passed along to the next cell. Now, if you're taking notes on this video, either for my class or for another class, this diagram on the side probably isn't what you wanna write down. Instead, I'm gonna show you notes like this after each stage so you can write down the notes that you need to keep those stages straight. You'll see along the membrane are protein channels. The protein channels are gonna allow certain ions to pass in or out of the cell and they're selective for specific ions. In yellow on our diagram are channels for sodium. They only allow sodium or Na plus ions to pass in or out. I've also drawn some protein channels in purple to represent potassium channels. They only allow potassium or K plus ions in or out of the cell. And the third protein that we have on the cell membrane is a protein pump. We call this the sodium potassium pump because it's gonna pump three sodiums out and pump two potassiums in and it's gonna be churning those sodiums out and potassiums in constantly throughout this whole process. What that does is it creates a gradient or a difference in concentration between the inside and outside of the cell. That word gradient is super important. We're gonna talk about it a lot. Without concentration gradients, your body literally could not function. Your brain wouldn't work. It's really important that we can form these gradients. The two gradients that we need here is sodium on the outside and potassium on the inside. So at this stage, we call this resting membrane potential. We've got sodiums on the outside, so we have a sodium gradient. There's much higher concentration of sodium outside the cell compared to inside the cell. And we have a potassium gradient as well, there's way more potassium inside the cell than outside of the cell. Now notice that there is some potassium outside and there is some sodium inside, but there's not an equal amount on both sides. Because there's way more sodium on the outside and potassium on the inside, we call that a concentration gradient. Resting membrane potential really isn't the first stage of the action potential. It's sort of the offsetting of the action potential. The action potential hasn't happened yet. The first stage will be depolarization, which we'll get to in a moment. Now this is a potential, and what that means is there's a difference in charge on the outside compared to the inside. Because there's more negatively charged ions on the inside of the cell, the overall cell membrane potential is about negative 70 millivolts. You can see this on this graph above me. Here's what you should write down for the resting membrane potential state. Neurons always have input signals coming in. Those input signals come in through their dendrites and they come from other neurons or sensory organs like your eyes or skin, for example. And sometimes those can be excitatory and sometimes those can be inhibitory. Whenever an excitatory signal comes into the neuron, the membrane potential is gonna rise just slightly. If enough of those excitatory signals come in from other neurons, to cause the resting membrane potential to get up to negative 55 millivolts, which we call the threshold, membrane potential, then suddenly the sodium channels will open up and sodium is free to move about the country. Ding. And sodium is free to flow in or out of the cell. This is the beginning of the depolarization stage. Now, once those sodium channels open, even though sodium technically can flow in or out, since we have a gradient, sodium is going to almost completely flow into the cell. Think about it. If you had everything all on one side and suddenly things can move back and forth, there's going to be more moving to the inside than the outside. You can see that in the animation here, sodium flows into the cell until there's about an equal amount of sodium inside or outside of the cell. Once those amounts equal out, sodium can still flow in or out, but it's gonna be flowing in and out at an equal rate, and so the concentrations of sodium will become equal. Or in other words, 
the concentration gradient per sodium has been eliminated. All that means is there's an equal concentration of sodium inside and out. There's no concentration difference, no concentration gradient. At this point, because so much sodium rushed into the cell, the cell becomes more positive, which makes sense. If you have more positive ions coming in, you should become more positive. That membrane potential or membrane voltage is gonna shoot up to about positive 40 millivolts. This is sort of the on setting for the action potential. And it's not gonna last for long, because remember, this is a chain reaction that's gonna be going down the neuron. But this particular little section that we're looking at is right now on the on setting. If you're taking notes at home, here's a slide that shows what you can write down for the depolarization stage. Now, after this section of axon has depolarized or turned on or received an action potential, those sodium channels are gonna close and then the potassium channels are gonna open. We call this stage repolarization. If the potassium channels open, think about it. Which way is potassium gonna flow? Well, since we have a concentration gradient of potassium where most of the potassium is on the inside of the neuron, that potassium is gonna start to flow out of the neuron. We have positive charges flowing out of the neuron, so our axon must be becoming more negative. Think about it, if you lose positive charges, you're becoming more negative. This is gonna cause the voltage to go back down a little bit below what that resting memory potential was. Now the potassium is gonna keep flowing out until you have about an equal amount of potassium on the inside or the outside. And again, this means that we've eliminated the concentration gradient for potassium. If you're taking notes from home, here's a slide that shows what you can write down for the repolarization stage. At this point, our action potential is over, but this neuron might need to send another action potential and might need to send it pretty quickly. As it is right now though, it's not ready to send an action potential. Let's think about that for a second. What if we were to try at this point to cause another action potential? Well, if the voltage reached threshold, the sodium channels would open. But take a look, what would happen if the sodium channels opened right now? Well, there is no sodium concentration gradient. So we wouldn't have this net flow of sodium into the cell, so we couldn't have another action potential yet. If we opened up our sodium channels, nothing would happen. Our brains wouldn't work. But luckily, you may have forgotten about it, but don't forget about the little pump that could, the sodium potassium pump. That sodium potassium pump during this final stage called the refractory period, is just gonna be chugging along, slowly pumping out three sodiums, and pumping in two potassiums. As it does that, it's gonna reestablish the concentration gradient. It's gonna put those sodiums outside, it's gonna put the potassiums inside. So we have a concentration difference or gradient for both. This doesn't just happen kind of on its own, and it doesn't happen passively. It's gonna take energy input. We're gonna to have to use ATP. This is a form of active transport. If it were just left to diffusion, the concentration gradients would balance out and we wouldn't have any gradient. In order to create a gradient, or in other words, to stuff all of that sodium outside and to stuff all that potassium inside, it's gonna take energy to do that. I kind of think about it like cleaning your room. If you don't put any energy into cleaning your room, your room's just gonna get more chaotic and disordered sort of on its own. In order to make it more ordered or to put things where they need to be, such as sodium on the outside, potassium on the inside, it'll take energy input to do that. So that pump is pumping, and eventually we get to a point where we have enough sodium outside, enough potassium inside, that the next time an action potential starts and those sodium channels open, sodium will come rushing in and will depolarize. And then potassium channels will open, potassium will leave the cell and will repolarize. That pump will keep pumping those sodiums out, potassiums in, to get through the refractory period back to our resting membrane potential. If you're taking notes at home, here's a slide to write down for the refractory period. Whew. All right, I know, that was a lot. Let's go back through this whole process in a quick recap. In resting membrane potential, we have sodium on the outside, potassium on the inside, and our sodium potassium channels are closed. If we get enough excitatory inputs from other neurons, our cell membrane voltage at that axon hillock will reach the negative 55, and then suddenly sodium channels in that part of the axon will open up. Sodium will rush into the cell, and that's gonna cause a depolarization of that neuron until that sodium gradient is gone, and there's equal concentration of sodium on the inside and the outside. Then in the repolarization stage, the sodium channels close, the potassium channels open, and potassium can flow out of the cell. When potassium flows out of the cell, that brings the voltage back down and turns off the action potential, Meanwhile, that action potential is happening in a chain reaction further and further along the axon. And then we're in the refractory period. That pump is pumping sodium out, potassium back in, 
using energy or ATP to do that because it's active transport. And once that sodium gradient and potassium gradient have been reestablished, it's ready to send another action potential whenever the time is right. Wow, Neri, I'll tell you what, could you be a little less complicated? Don't look at me like that. Can you believe that's happening in our brains right now? Wow. Yeah, I think our viewers can learn this stuff for sure. I agree. What you all can't hear, Neri? What's that, Neri? You said if somebody has any brain cells at all, they will definitely like and subscribe and leave a comment on this video. Literally sitting in my room by myself talking to a stuffed neuron. Okay, bye.